A new study found 7% of women and 10.3% of men have difficulty controlling their sexual urges. And these numbers appear to be rising. Hi, I'm Greg and me horny. TikTok is now full of out of nowhere thirst traps, Instagram is officially porn, and we also have literal hookup apps on our phone. Does it not feel like in these times we are constantly inundated with opportunities to be horned up? So what is happening to our brain and body when we are horny? And why are some people hornier than others? And are we constantly losing control of our our brain by flooding the deck with horniness. Let's get into some horny science. To start, academics don't say horny, they say sexually aroused. Boo, boring. Now you may think sexual arousal is related to your genitals, but it is actually a lot more complicated than that and follows these larger steps. One, neuronal processing of relevant information, aka your brain and neurons experience a sort of desire. You see a TikTok video of hot person bouncing. You catch someone's eye on the street and your central nervous system is truly like, wait a second, is this sexy? To arousal. But in the general sense, neuronal excitation in your brain and body begins without you even realizing it. And you may start to sweat, become on high alert, and in some instances, get hard nipples. Ding! Three, incentive motivation. Consciously or subconsciously deciding if you are gonna do something about your newly excited state of arousal. If involving someone else, this is where intimacy and risk assessment comes in, leading to the question, is it gonna get genital? Four, genital response, boner, engorged labia and clitoris. This is where the gorgeous orgasm can come in. And five, resolution. Once you're done the deed, your body now physiologically feels different. All of these steps are controlled by neuronal firing in your brain and hormones throughout your body. In the brain, whilst in the process of horniness, we see firing in the inferior frontal lobule, the parietal lobules, the insula, the frontal cortex, and the cingulate gyrus. Now these horny parts of your brain are active due to hormones, but they also control the release of hormones throughout your body. And this is where horniness gets very complex and very juicy, juicy. The initial response of desire and arousal is said to be mostly controlled by testosterone and estrogen. These hormones conveniently are released from the ovaries and testosterone which is vivi sexy IMO, which means in my opinion. There is some research to say that men who are hornier have higher baseline levels of testosterone and women who are hornier have higher baseline levels of testosterone and estrogen in their bodies. When reading these studies, I found them very compelling, but they all ended by saying, we cannot say this for sure. Now, once our horniness has gone genital, this is when the hormones such as norepinephrine and dopamine come in and things start to feel real good. Dopamine from the hypothalamus is released when we eat food. So yeah, it's making the brain go yummy, yummy. Norepinephrine can make you feel giddy, energetic, and euphoric, but also decrease appetite and insomnia. So yes, you can be so horny you can't sleep. Also, these hormones and their effect on the brain is directly related to decreased self-awareness and non-rational behavior. It's why during sex, you can sometimes do or say things that later you are like, giggle, giggle, I cannot believe I ever said that. The orgasm occurs when your central nervous system, hormones, and sensory stimulation pass a certain threshold. In women, this can result in one second motor contractions of the pelvic floor, followed by two to four seconds of repeated uterine and vaginal smooth muscle contraction. Whew, okay, I'm feeling real hot after reading that. The post-orgasm for men and women involves a release of serotonin, which can lead to mood stabilization and even a mood boost. Hence, the pleasure we see in movies post-sexy times. Oxytocin is another hormone not directly related to the process of horniness, but is integral to the motivation to take horniness to the genitals. This hormone is necessary for feelings of bonding, which for many people is a precursor to horniness and sex. We now need to talk about the wet, hard, and gorged elephant in the room. Is our constant inundation of horny images making these neuronal pathways fire more? Is this bad? And the answer may be yes. A lot of the brain regions and hormones involved in sexual arousal are similar to that of when you binge eat sweets, do literal cocaine, or watch lots of porn. The increased dopamine signaling can change your brain and lead to changes in the dorsoventral cingulate cortex, which can lead to horniness problems. This is known in the academic community as hypersexuality disorder. Hypersexuality is the term for people who seem to have changes in their brain and endocrine system that make them too horny. This is most likely due to exposing themselves to too much sexual arousal, masturbation, or sex, which has changed the literal shape of their brain, but hypersexuality 
heterosexuality is hard to understand and is underreported and underdiagnosed. Recent research said that two to 6% of people admit to having a hypersexuality disorder. It is more common in men than women and using Kinsey's old threshold diagnosis, a way to understand if you have one is that you've had seven or more orgasms per week for six months. That's one orgasm per day for six months. Again, this is Kinsey. He's an old fashioned kind of guy. You can take with this what you will. Another way to view this disorder is if you have uncontrolled sexual behaviors. You can't stop masturbating. You can't stop having sex, even though you want to stop. It's thought that the age of onset of hypersexuality is 18.7 years of age, but it's not usually diagnosed until people are 37. By studying 19 subjects with hypersexuality and 19 healthy subjects, it was found that when shown sexual imagery, there was increased activation in the lower parietal lobe and the cingulate cortex in people with hypersexuality disorder. Also increased firing in the dorsoventral cingulate cortex leading to increased dopamine release. It is thought that people who have this uncontrolled horniness have actually partaken in so many sexual activities that they physically altered their brain that now they are more horny more often and maybe can't control their sexual arousal. They've changed their brain to crave sexual arousal more and more. Another study got some people sexually aroused by showing them porn. Others were sadly not shown porn. They were then surveyed and it was found that the sexually aroused people found non-sexual aspects of the question sexual and were more likely to say they'd engage in unsafe sex. Another study found that people diagnosed with anxiety and depression are overall less horny, but being in an anxious state can lead to increased horniness. It's why sometimes you might be really nervous about doing something and think, I gotta go to the bathroom and jerk the chicken. <laughs> I made this video because as a gay man, sometimes I think, do me and all my gay friends have hypersexuality disorders? <laughs> But seriously, I think it's a super fascinating topic because every time these thirst traps appear on our phones, I realize that we're physiologically altering our bodies. And I think this is worth talking about. I then obviously became obsessed with researching the science of horniness. I hope this video was educational to you, maybe made you think about things in a different way. Who knows, maybe it turned you on. <laughs> I didn't take off my shirt. I would never. Share this with your horny friends and family and we will see you next week for a new science video. Thanks for watching. Peace.